This is St. Gallen's. The city that made me rethink and fall in love with nonfiction. But hold on, let's back up a little. So in November of last year, me and Mac decided to explore St. Gallen's. It was originally his idea because there is an abbey there, the Abbey of St. Gall, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. When we initially got there, I was enamored by the fall leaves against the white buildings and just the absolute beauty of Switzerland and fall. And we ended up taking a hike to explore the majority of the city and it was definitely one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my entire life. We were walking up through all of these gorgeous hills and trees and we turned the corner and we we're like all of a sudden in a forest after seeing like the entire city and then walking back down we were able to see all of the cool buildings and just the like culture here it was just like oh my goodness <laughs> i really really love just how beautiful this place is in the fall it's so so gorgeous how the leaves just pop off of the white buildings it's gorgeous and the funniest thing is we weren't even planning on doing this hike to this park because we were told that the park wasn't worth it if you didn't go in the summer which is just not the case at all it was gorgeous in the fall. I highly, highly recommend coming because we were just blown away. And to see the lake off in the distance, uh, wow, absolutely gorgeous. One of the most beautiful views of a city I've seen, honestly, so far in this trip. It was so amazing. The main point of our trip was again, the Abbey of St. Gall. Now, the Abbey of St. Gall is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the reason it is so protected is because of the numerous vaults of manuscripts that were protected there. So all of these manuscripts are one of the major reasons why we, as like present-day humans, understand what it was like to live in the Middle Ages. I definitely believe that we would have thought that what the people of the Renaissance were writing was true, that the Middle Ages were the quote-unquote Dark Ages, but the Abbey's documents completely prove that that could not be further from the truth. So much history was preserved here, and it was an absolute fantastic experience to go through all the museums and learn so much about who the people of the Middle Ages actually were, and especially who the women of the Middle Ages actually were. There was so much about women in these museums going through this trip that I was finally inspired to pick up the book Femina, which had been sitting on my shelf for so long, but we will get into that in a moment. library is going to be my favorite part of just like seeing everything there and you see all the pictures and it looks so gorgeous but honestly the museums and the church was definitely my favorite parts of just this whole uh, abbey center everything like that it was very very cool to just really learn the history of St. Gall and why the abbey is so important in history and yeah I don't know I just the library was very claustrophobic. There was tons of people in there, and so it got really overwhelming, especially someone who de deals very poorly with crowds and everything like that. I was having 
a little bit of a difficult time um, and it took a little bit of the fun away from it. However, seeing the books was really, really cool. Seeing like a really old copy of Dante's uh, Divine Comedy was really fascinating. I just, it's so cool how many old, old documents were preserved here and it's insane that they were even able to be preserved here and how much history it holds. It was really, really fascinating to learn about that. I was a little disappointed with the library, but still very beautiful. All in all, we left the city feeling very happy and pleased, and I left feeling empowered to read again the book Femina. So this, of course, is Femina, a history of the Middle Ages written through the women that were written out of it. What an amazing title, can I just say? But this book was just so incredible. I absolutely loved exploring all of the ins and outs of the Middle Ages through women's perspectives. It was so incredible to learn about how important women were in implementing a lot of huge historical shifts. But all of that being said, reading this book made me completely come to realize that nonfiction does not have to be scary. I think a lot of the times we are taught that nonfiction is something that you need to remember all of, you need to remember all the facts, you need to study nonfiction. I believe a lot of nonfiction scariness comes from the idea that the majority of nonfiction that we have read, or at least I have read, came from my days at school, came from my days at college. And when you were reading nonfiction, you were studying. You were not reading it for fun, you were not reading it for the sake of learning, you were reading it because you were being tested. And let me just say, nonfiction as an adult, nonfiction that you pick up for fun, you are not tested on. You do not need to remember every single fact that comes out of that book. You do not need to understand everything that is being said. The reality is that you really just read nonfiction to gain new perspectives and learn fun things about what you want to learn. It doesn't have to be hard or complicated. It doesn't have to be burdensome. But believe me when I say you are really neglecting so many incredible books if you completely count out the genre of nonfiction. All right, now that we're done with that conversation, let's chat nonfiction books. So I think a great starting place right off the bat with nonfiction is starting with memoirs because they are a lot less daunting than a lot of other nonfiction that I've read and they're about like real people's individual stories. They feel a lot more like fiction in a lot of ways. And my favorite memoir of all time is Crying in H Mart. I read this last year around December for the second time and it just is so good. It follows the relationship with a young woman and her mom and how that has like shifted and changed over time. And it also discusses the time period in Michelle's honors life who wrote this book um, of her mom passing away from cancer. So there's lots of really, really big feelings and things being talked about. And one of my favorite parts of this book was how much she and her mom connected over food and how that brought them together in a multitude of ways. It's a tearjerker. It is heartfelt. It's incredible. Highly recommend. Some other memoirs I would recommend are I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, this memoir is a lot more poetic in its prose and it is so so good. It talks about a young black woman growing up and her experiences and I loved it. It was very very heartfelt and again a little bit heartbreaking. I feel like I just like heartbreaking memoirs. <laughs> The last memoir I would recommend is I'm Glad My Mom Died. I would highly recommend listening to the audiobook version of this because Jeanette McCurdy actually reads it. But it follows Jeanette McCurdy, who is a former childhood actor and star, and her life through the child exploitation that she experienced, but specifically with her and her relationship with her narcissistic mother and how that affected her. It's really, really good, and I just realized how many books are about moms. So anyway, moving on. The next set of nonfiction books I would recommend getting into are essay collections. I feel like essay collections are like the next step. They 
regard facts a lot more. They teach you a lot about different like concepts and things while also having that personal aspect of memoirs, which I really, really enjoy. And a lot of my favorite books are actually essay collections. I feel like they're just incredible and I absolutely love them. And that being said, the first one on this list is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. In this book, John Green takes tons of different aspects of human life and gives them ratings on a five-star scale. I originally found this book because I actually listened to the podcast before it became a book, so I highly recommend listening to the podcast if you have not. And it's just incredible, it's funny, heartfelt, you learn so many random facts about so many random things. I know a lot about Tetris for some reason. I know a lot about how keyboards were made. It's wonderful. I also know how impactful sunsets are to John Green and how impactful the trees in his backyard are to him. And I just really love that aspect of this book, how it really brings together really funky, weird things that I would never have learned about and also a lot about John Green's personal life that makes this feel like a memoir while also feeling like a love letter to humanity, and that's great. The next essay collection I would recommend is one of my favorite books of all time, and that is Braiding Sweetgrass. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this book way too many times, but here I am again because it's so good and everyone and their mom should read this book. This book connects the scientific ideas of botany with Kimmerer's indigenous traditions, and it also talks a lot about humans' relationship to the earth itself and how we should engage more in generosity and reciprocity. We should be more giving. And also it gives a very hopeful message about life and about the future of the world, which was very heartwarming, but she gives that message with like the caveat of if we change, right? This can happen if we do make the changes today. And I just feel like this talks a lot about like internally making changes about how you view yourself and others. This book will make you cry over strawberries and cry over pecans. It will change your perspective on literally every single thing this world has. And I highly recommend listening to the audiobook because her voice is one of the most soothing voices I've ever heard in my life. She sounds so peaceful and calm and I would love to meet her in real life because, wow, this book is just everything to me and it rewrote how I view the world, which is why nonfiction is a great, great thing. The next set of books are more of like classic nonfiction, if you can even call it that. But these books are more dealing with like straight up facts about specific events and specific things. And of course, I just have to bring up Femina again. This book was so good. I highly recommend reading it and enjoying learning about women in the Middle Ages because they were pretty cool. So yeah. But before I get into the other book I would recommend, when it comes to these like more in-depth books, I would highly recommend starting with things that you already enjoy. So if you are really into like video games, get books describing history and weird facts about video games. If you're really into specific areas of history, like if you really want to learn about the history of Japan, focus on books that deal with that and then you can kind of dive into the whole world of nonfiction history wise and just like nonfiction books that are again kind of diving in to more nitty-gritty facts and i would also add the reminder of nonfiction you are not being tested you do not have to hold those facts in your brain to enjoy the book and enjoy learning something new as long as you take one thing out of a book that nonfiction book succeeded in its job but that being said, the next book that's kind of in this realm is This is Shakespeare by Emma Smith. I love Shakespeare. I was a huge, huge Shakespeare nerd all throughout high school. I read the majority of his plays before I even graduated high school, which is a little 
crazy. Uh, <laughs> but I really, really enjoy Shakespeare, and so this book was perfect for me. She really dives into a lot of the different plays in really cool ways and explains the plays in ways that I wouldn't have ever thought about before. So it just expanded like a whole realm of like how to interpret Shakespeare's works, which was so fun for me. But again, this is not probably for everyone. If you are a Shakespeare nerd, I highly would recommend it. But that being said, I again highly recommend going into things you are interested in and diving into learning about that area of expertise because there are some incredible people out there that know a lot of things about the things you love and they will tell you about them. So highly recommend reading books like that. These are two nonfiction books that I am looking forward to reading. I have not quite read them yet and that is Cultish, which talks about the language of cults and how language causes people to become entrapped in them. So this was just fascinating. Also, the cover is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. And the other book I am very, very excited about reading is The Swans of Harlem, which talks about the black ballet scene in Harlem and the history of it and all of the nitty gritty details of it. And it sounds incredible. I already have it pre-ordered. I'm very, very excited about when it comes out. It's going to be incredible. So I highly recommend getting that book because it just sounds so cool. And my little self that tried ballet for like two days is excited to read it. <laughs> But that being said, those are all the nonfiction books on my list currently. There's also the realm of nonfiction self-help books, which I haven't really dove into and I'm not a huge fan of self-help books in general. I feel like they're all kind of saying the same thing, but someone out there could prove me wrong. So if you have any self-help book recommendations, please let me know. And if you have any nonfiction book recommendations, please let me know because I would love, love, love to hear them. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for everyone who has gotten this far. My name is Michaela Wilson, and if you love books, D&D, &D, anything really remotely nerdy, if you have ADHD and want to get into reading, maybe consider giving me a follow, because that is all the things that we discuss here on this channel. I post every Friday, and I also post several shorts throughout the week, so I have lots of things for everyone to enjoy. And again, just thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. 